I probably have some from 1985 somewhere in my system. <coughs> uh, I'm sure that some of those blocks are, are still going to be in use. So, does anyone want to see this book while, it's, uh, while we're still here? Just to take a peek at it. Pass it around and look at it. Anybody? No, the, no, they're they're already horrified by DNS. <laughs> okay. Let alone adding DNS set. Yeah. Uh, so, the TarSnap service, what do they know? Well, some three-letter agency, some Canadian three-letter agency, comes, pounds on the door, and says, uh, excuse me, but we'd really appreciate it if you'd show us what you have uh, on this. And, and we have a very politely word, worded warrant or some other three-letter agency comes to Amazon and says, give us everything on this. What do they know? They know how many blocks of data you've stored. They know how often you connect. They know how many machines you've backed up. They know your email address. And perhaps your PayPal account or a credit card information whatever they've kept, and they know how much is in your account, which, you know, if you have $3.98 left, well, uh, and that's all. Now, we have data privacy is a huge issue these days. I would not expect Colin, the, the architect, and owner of TarSnap to go to jail to protect my information. Uh, that, that's an unreasonable thing to ask of anyone, uh, especially since Colin is kind of the anti-Chuck Norris. <laughs> uh, he's, this, he's this little guy, and he looks like if you sneeze too hard on him, he might break. But with what he, he can gleefully provide every scrap of information he has on you. And it will do anyone else no good whatsoever. And again, you have the source code. You can verify what you sent to them. So, I wasn't sure how timing would go, so I kind of lumped things together in uh, a slide here. Deduplication and compression. Compression works by removing redundancy from files. Deduplication works by removing redundancy from files. But they do these in completely different ways. If you back up files in TarSnap, don't compress them. If you take a text file and you make a gzip of it, you get a compressed file, that's fine. If you take that same text file, you add one character to the end. That completely changes the, the compression algorithm's results. And the resulting tarball is completely different than the first tarball. Or sorry, the first compressed file. I do a MySQL dump of my WordPress sites every day. Uh, and I back that up as straight text because it only adds a few megabytes of text every day because, you know, the massively popular discussion forums <laughs> that I provide uh, are, are incredibly efficient and don't need much more space than that. Uh, so, and then I, I keep those plain text files for a couple days and then Cron throws them away. Uh, and why do I only keep two days worth? Because if I want a WordPress dump from six months ago, I go call it out of TarSnap. It's still there. Um, just like any other backup system, you want to make sure files are cold before you back them up. Don't back up MySQL InnoDB files. <laughs> uh, 
You, you should know this, but it applies to tar snap too. You can also make keys that have a limited function, like a tar snap key that can only create archives. That way, if some cretin breaks into your system and says, I'm going to destroy the system and the backups, <coughs> and I know how to use tar snap, he logs in and says, okay, fry all the archives. Well, no, the key on this machine can only create archives. Hmm. Um, you have a separate machine that you destroy archives on. Hmm. Uh, that, that can be a useful feature for some environments. Uh, there are several scripts to rotate log files. I use hmm. ACTS. Yes. So I'm curious if you can take one system that is hidden off in your private network and back that up using a different system that has access to the internet. Can you like pull the data and then send it off? You can, anywhere you can run tar, you can run tar snap. So if you're no, sharing is, files with NFS. What, he, what he's saying is, can you have it dump the files instead of ship them off? have another machine ship them on. If, and I understand why you would want to do that because I've ran into that before too. Yeah. Uh, if you can run tar on it, you can run tar snap on it. I think it's no, I, I think the question was you're, you're missing it. If you, yeah, I probably am missing the question. Is there, is there if you can't reach the server, can you run tar snap offline? And I think that was the question. Yeah you have to have T C P connection to a particular port okay. on the tar snap okay. server. This was a discussion of the so that's a no. Okay. Uh, air gap machines, you have a problem. This is not a tool for you. Um, every so often, someone will ask tar snap uh, mailing list or Colin a question along the lines of, how can I hide my tar snap traffic? Uh, the tool is not designed for that. If you do not want your employer to know that you are using tar snap, probably should not be using Tarsen. <laughs> um, using multiple archives, you can restore any archive that you've kept. Oh, I know what that line meant, sorry. One machine can have any number of archives just like Tarballs. I back up home separately from Etsy name D, separately from Barmail. Okay, just a word on restores. <laughs> Untested backups are not backups. <laughs> At 25 cents a gigabyte to download, you can, and with VirtualBox, you can afford to test your restores. <clears throat> Please do so. Um, so, that's our very brief 20-minute overview of tar snap. Any questions? When yes. You run, is it right as you run the command to create the archive? Is that right then it gets uploaded? Yes. You are actively interacting with tar snap service as you run tar snap minus cf or xf or whatever. Is that the same archive? It's held on your computer and held. Uh, archives are not held on your computer at all. Each block is shipped off as it is created and deduplicated. There, there is no temp file on your server. There is a cache file to say what has been sent. So if you have an interrupted internet connection, it will know where to pick up. Uh, if you have an interrupted internet connection, TarSnap has a checkpoint feature that will say how far it's gone. And you can adjust the checkpoints depending on how well your internet works. The yes, sir. The physical location of this is Amazon? Amazon. And, and so, do you know where that is? Is that in the U.S.? Or that is in the U.S. Um, Tarsnap itself is a Canadian company. And the Amazon backend is not likely to change anytime soon. And before the internet goes down, I'm going to I'm going to keep taking questions until after they shut us off. But I want to give a book away.
to whoever has the most horrific backup system. <laughs> and I don't run backups is not a backup system. <laughs> well, not you again. <laughs> <laughs> No, I was going to suggest I have the perfect backup. I don't do anything worth saving. Hey, <laughs> that's genius. Not doing anything worth saving is an excellent backup system. Um, I'm going to suggest you pick up a hobby in meat space. The library will be closing in 15 minutes at 9 p.m. Library internet connections will shut down approximately 10 so, minutes before closing. Someone has a horrible backup. one of the library's computers. Oh, no, I, I had a question. Uh, yeah, I've got um, about two terabytes of uh, music in that. that. I'm backing up to a three terabyte drive. Thank you. And uh, I'm trying to do incremental backups on that as well, and it's not working out terribly well. Are backing up two terabytes of music to a three gig drive with three terabyte incremental. Three terabyte drive, sorry. Three terabyte drive. Three terabyte drive incremental backup. Yeah, okay. that's not good. <laughs> I wouldn't really call it. Sorry? Uh, I, would, I wouldn't call us a, call us a bad uh, or, or a backup system. We did have a complete failure of all the data on the data on our backup system. Okay. If you have lost data on your backup system, still, if you've lost data on your backup system, you have a horrific backup system. Oh, yes. I got one. Thank you. All right. How about. I bought an old Linux implementation that was RAID, RAID 5, about five 600 gig worth of crap, being backed up USB 1.0 on a USB drive <laughs> via RSync. That never, that never finished. USB I, I to your... RSync. Okay. Yeah, it, so far, you're in the lead. Yes, sir. <laughs> Uh, I was just going to say I have data backed up on eight-inch disks that one of these days I hope I can recover. Whoa! Eight-inch floppy, eight floppy disks. Eight-inch floppy disks. Okay, uh, David. Yes, sir. Um, I had a friend come really back up. He had a RAID five system, and he had two disks failing at the exact same time. Wow. Two disks failing on a RAID five happens. That's why we have RAID six. But that's why we have backup. I I have to go with Mr. Eight Inch Floppy. Yeah. 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 We uh we we need to get moving. Right? Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, I'm really glad to get this book because I looked at the other one and you write well. <laughs>